What is your vision for this ET3? What will change? Or what? Our vision is truly global, global, where a person could travel from Seoul, Korea mm -hmm. to New York City in two hours and 15 minutes, mm -hmm. and the cost would be $100 round trip. $100? Round okay. trip. A tenth of the cost of flying. Amazing. amazing. Or goods and products could be ordered a pallet at a time, minimum order. Mm -hmm. Instead of a shipping container at a time, minimum order. And be delivered in four hours instead of four weeks. How do you go about it when, it, when we start in Seoul, South Korea? Oh, yes, um, and th there will be two tubes built, one tube for each direction on a global backbone that connects mm -hmm. the continents together from Siberia to Alaska, across Canada to the United States. <laughs> and so then from going Alaska the, to, how do you cross it? And then going the other direction, it would go through India, mm -hmm. uh, through, across China, and then through India, and then to Europe. Amazing. But from Alaska, how do you go through the sea, ocean? Yes, it would tunnel underground, oh, underwater, underground. Um, just like the tunnel across the English Channel, English. except a little bit longer and um, less water depth, only uh, 75 meters water depth. Mm, shallow. Shallow but water across shallow the Bering Strait. Very interesting. So how long have you been working on this? Well, I've, I've probably been working on it my whole life, but, uh, but I first um, wrote things down when I was um, studying mechanical engineering in, in the um, university, Walla Walla University, mm -hmm. and I wrote ideas down in the back of my physics lab book. And um, those ideas I would transfer to um, journals. And then um, in the mid-90s, I started getting very excited about the possibilities and started crunching some numbers. Mm -hmm. And I discovered that ET3 can be built for a tenth of the cost of high-speed rail. A tenth of the cost, the current cost. Yes. Or ET3 can be built for a fourth of the cost of a four-lane freeway. And the reason it can be built so cheap is because the vehicles only weigh 180 kilograms empty, but they'll haul the same 360 kilogram load as a typical car. So we only have a little over a ton of load if, if two vehicles are passing to support. Compare that to a 100-ton locomotive and the massive infrastructure that it takes to hold that up or to magnetically levitate it. And you can see very quickly why ET3 requires one th less than a 30th of the amount of concrete and steel to build the infrastructure. Well, one-thirtieth yes. of the concrete. So we can build it for a tenth the cost and still leave plenty of profit potential for local companies to assemble it using local capacities that already exist all over the world. For instance, the ability to make pipelines. For instance, the ability to make vacuum pumps. All these capacities already exist. So ET3 is creating a new market for Billions, if not trillions, of dollars of existing capacities. Oh, ET3 could be built right along existing highways or existing railroads without disrupting the use of those um, assets. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. Good. The <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> first question again. Again. Mm -hmm. And you don't you don't stop. You go long this time. Okay, I won't ask any question, PT. So you have to say that it is a travel, a trap, the space travel. Oh, okay. And then how it connects and all that. Okay. What is your vision for this ET3? Um, the vision for ET3 is being able to enjoy a global transportation system where a person could travel from Seoul, Korea, up across Siberia, across Alaska, across the Bering Strait, which is um, less than 150 kilometers of water to cross, and um, continuing on travel across Canada to the United States or across the United States down to South America. Going the other direction, a person could travel from Seoul, Korea, across China, across India, to Europe 
and arrive in either North America or Europe in less than two hours. The, uh, um, the challenge of ET3 is making people aware that there is a new mode of travel that it uses existing capacities to build it. Pipelines are being built all around the world. So ET3 can leverage those existing processes and create a new market for the production capacity that already exists. Um, the uh, vacuum pump making capacity already exists all over the world. The capacity to make the helical piers to put into the ground, the equipment exists almost any city um, can put those into the ground in less than 15 minutes for a 25 meter span. Um, in another 15 minutes, the vertical support can be put in place. In another 15 minutes, the section, 25 meter section of double tube can be bolted into place. Every 15 minutes, another 25 meters. Compare that to the amount of earthwork that it takes to make a freeway or the amount of work that it takes to make high speed rail. It might take a week just to put the, the pilings in the ground. So ET3 can be built for a tenth of the cost of high speed rail or a fourth of the cost of a four lane freeway. And ET3, since it's automated and the vehicles can operate at very high frequencies, has 10 times the capacity. One pair of ET3 tubes that are a meter and a half diameter each tube has the capacity of a 40 lane freeway at a design speed of 600 kilometers per hour. If you increase the speed to 6,500 kilometers per hour, each tube can carry 120 car-sized vehicles every second. So it has the capacity of a 400-lane freeway. That one pair of tubes going across the Bering Strait between Alaska and Siberia could carry all of the container ship travel between Asia and the United States that presently goes on container ships and all the air travel and it would still have 80% of the capacity. That would only use 20% of the capacity of that tube just for moving cargo. So ET3 can move cargo, um, a pallet at a time minimum shipping quantity from any manufacturer in Korea to any Walmart store in the United States in four hours or less or um, apples from any grower here in the United States to um, Japan where they sell for $5 a piece. So um, food will be much cheaper, uh, much fresher, picked ripe instead of picked two weeks early. Um, all kinds of changes are possible with ET3. Transportation is the master key to survival on Earth. If food and water can't be brought to us, or if we can't travel to get it, um, we, we perish. But with ET3, since we double the speed, more than double the speed of transportation, mm -hmm. there's, if we, if we only double the speed, there's four times more opportunity in that circle of influence on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. So every time the transportation velocity increases historically, it improves the standard of living. Um, the uh, sailing ship in less than a generation doubled the global standard of living. Mm -hmm. And then when trains were invented, steam power in um, less than 50 or 60 years doubled the global standard of living. And then when cars and aircrafts were invented, again, it doubled the global standard of living. Mm -hmm. ET3 has the potential mm -hmm. to again double the standard of living, displacing cars and aircraft, just like cars and aircraft displaced trains, and just like trains displaced muscle power. Mm -hmm. So we can have a new paradigm shift in transportation that allows people to live much easier. What this will enable is if every country in the world develops this to the same standard, building it to the same diameter tubes, so it can be networked together eventually, like the internet is inter um, network together, we can have travel between any cities in the United States in four hours or less. All it takes is the will to do it, will to do it. and the knowledge. The knowledge is already there. The capacity is already there. 
the political will is a challenge. Um, all companies, will, all countries will need to cooperate to build it to the same standard and to figure out where the best routes are to, to cross borders. Those are the challenges that we face. Okay.